This is a different kind of art project with Miss Bodine. Hi, Kipsters, it's Miss Bodine. And uh, we are going to do a very important art project today. Some of you will be doing this art project from home if you can't make it to this school. If you can make it to this school, we are going to be gathering uh, on Wednesday, today, from 11 to 3 to paint for change in Minneapolis. So, as you've already heard from Mr. Cameron, you've already heard it from the last video about the death of George Floyd, the officers that are still walking free, and the power of our city in protesting. We are being broadcast throughout the whole world, and people are looking to us, and we will not stop. So to continue on with that protest and have your voices be such an important part of that, we are going to gather and paint. Before we do, we're going to read a book called Painting for Peace in Ferguson. This book was written after Mike Brown's murder in Ferguson, Missouri. The officer who murdered Mike Brown, a black man, still walks free and was never charged and or was never charged and convicted of murder. So similar to now, people felt it was unjust. Things happen and they also reacted with protest through art. So let's read this book together. Painting for Peace in Ferguson by Carol Swartout Klein. And as I read this book, uh, if you have comments, you can put them in the comment section in your Google Classroom and questions, and I'll try to answer those. This is the foreword by Mr. Rogers. When I was a boy and I would see scary things on the news, my mother would say to me, look for the helpers. You will always find people who are helping. Dedicated to the people of Ferguson and St. Louis as they begin the steps of healing and creating a stronger and better community. In the small town of Ferguson in 2014, some people did things that were meaner than mean. Some people were mad, some people were sad, but everyone everywhere felt pretty bad. Police were there and protesters too. People were scared, didn't know what to do. Some locked their doors, boarded windows up tight to help keep them safe all through the long night. But when morning came, folks took one look around and said, we don't like the looks of our town. We have an idea, we know what to do. We'll bring out our paints, red, yellow, and blue. We'll paint up those boards that make us feel down. We'll paint pictures of love and bring hope to the town. And these are real pictures from the murals on the plywood boards in Ferguson, Missouri. And so they came out on a day sunny and bright. Young folks and old folks, black folks and white. They went up to the north and down south near Shaw. with their paints and their brushes and started to draw. They drew pictures of peace, of hope and of light that show loves even stronger than the darkest of nights. Some art had sayings with words that have power. Other art was from nature, a tree, bird, or flower. Some dazzled with colors that danced in the light. Other art was more bold, just using black and white.
As they walked down the street, they were proud of their art. Because for things to get better, we must each do our part. We'll reach out to each other as we work side by side and love one another, both in and outside. The work is not finished. There's much more to be done. But this art shows the spirit of a new Ferguson. I don't know about you, but some of the images in that book really inspired me. So I'm very excited to get together with you and make art. Art for protest is different than normal art. And let me give you some of those examples right now before we start thinking about what we want our artwork to look like. Number one, art for protest comes from a deep need for things to change. When you think about art that we've learned about in class, a lot of times art is made to sell and so that the artist can make a living and make money. So you might make a portrait of someone and they might pay you so that they have that painting or drawing. Some art is made to be hung up in galleries or in people's houses and it's just made to be beautiful. And no other message is involved besides the art is beautiful. And sometimes art is made to be useful and I'm sure you've seen like decorative vases and things made out of ceramics or beautiful cups or bowls and that's also art that's made to be useful. This art, protest art, say it with me, protest art is made to spread a message for change. So here are the five ways that protest art is different than other types of art. So number one, protest art has a clear thought out message. It's asking for change and it's a lot of times demanding change. Number two, protest art usually appeals to people's emotions to make them feel what you're feeling. If you're hurt, if you're angry, if you're sad, if you're confused, your art can represent that. If you have love and hope, your art can represent that too. Art can also, protest art can also be made to be funny. There are artworks that people will bring to protest that lighten the mood and make people laugh or make something seem funny in order to create change as well. And lastly, sometimes protest art is just facts. The truth is what people see on the news and what people can read about in newspapers a lot of times is not the truth. And so sometimes at a protest, people will put out facts and just statistics and real events that happen so that they can spread the awareness of the truth so that the media can't um, erase the truth. Three, protest art needs to be quickly done because a lot of times you are actually going to move your body to a protest and you need to bring something with you on your way to protest with. Protest art needs to be done quickly so that your message can get out because things move very quick when there's a time of unrest and when you need to get your point across, you need to do it quick. Number four, protest art uses inexpensive materials. You don't need to go out and buy a canvas for protest art. You can use the back of a cardboard box you can use an old poster that you turn around or paint over. You can use permanent marker. It doesn't have to be with fancy art supplies. It can be from whatever you have on hand. Number five, protest art is made to be seen. So you either bring it out with you if you're going to a protest or you can display it where a lot of people will see it. This is where you might see signs that go across the highway or people doing murals on plywood on buildings or you might even see someone do a poster and just stick it in the window of their house so that when people go by they can see the message. So now that we know a lot about what protest art is, let's make some. 
you have two choices. You can work from home if you are not able to come up to this school with us. You can do protest art from home and you can use that list of the five things we talked about and any inspiration from the book that we read. You can also just look into your heart and ask what do you want the world to look like when you grow up? What needs to change in the world right now to be that world you want to live in? What needs to stay the same? What part of our world right now are you grateful for and would you like to continue? So while you think about that, I'm gonna actually have a couple Kipster leaders share what they want to change or what they want the world to look like when they grow up to guide us in what we wanna be painting on these boards. What do you want the world to be like? I want it to be like a happy place where like we can all work together, do stuff outside, like write chalk on, on the like concrete and stuff and make like a more safer world, like where people don't have to fight. I wish like white people could like be nicer. Well, not white people, but like certain people be nicer to other people, like colored people and like work together. Like I'm not explaining, but come together be in the same neighborhoods and not have to have a problem with it. And just, I would want to have a better president too, because he's he's making all this commotion. And he's making it halfway, but other people are making it more. And I just want it like, to be a safer place. And I want my future to be like, I want it to be like a more safer and happy place for like people to live and have like families and, and do stuff. My name is Angel. What would you like to see change in the world? What would I like to see change in the world is racism will stop. People will stop littering. Cops will stop killing innocent black men and having a better president. World peace and equality. All right, I don't know what else there is left to say because hearing from y'all and hearing your voices and what you wish for, it just lights a fire under me. I wanna go out right now and paint those things, but I gotta wait for you to get here. So um, make sure that you communicate with your family. You have a plan for coming up to this school. We will be placed in front of this school. I'm gonna show you what we just got donated to us um, from um, University Rebuild, a company that donated 20 sheets of plywood. This is what we'll be painting on. Um, Miss Bodine and Miss Fairbanks went out and bought gallons of paint, just tons and tons of spray paint, brushes, every. Um, and I almost forgot, we are doing this uh, activity with social distancing in front of the school. So there'll be lots of space between each board so that you can paint on the board with space with your family. Um, we're also asking that everybody wear a face covering. I have mine right here, I'm wearing a scarf. So you can wear a face covering and we also have gloves. But if you want to bring gloves too, we're going to make sure that we stay really safe. And even if you want to go up and give, you know, me or a friend a hug, I'm just going to say it's probably not a good idea, even though I desperately want to give some hugs out right now. Um, I can't wait to see you. If you do this project from home and you can't come up to the school, please send it to me. And um, I will put it up on Instagram and share your beautiful art with the world. Everyone is so excited to see it. And again, uh, just to recap, I just want to let everyone know this is a protest, also a mural painting. It will be at the KNSP campus and it will happen from 11 a.m. today to 3 p.m. today, Wednesday, June 5th. I cannot wait to see you there.